if you want to draw old ruined castles and things like that, Hergé is really, really good at doing it. And so it's, it's always useful to go and see how he does things. And look at this beautiful, simple thing here. Um, it, it, that's the thing about it. It is very, very simple. A lot of the shadows are all just in, in blacks and things. I think there was a hint of shading there. Let's go from this and see how we can do some really simple stonework. So we're going to basically want to block out um, our <laughs> ruined building, our gothic kind of ruined building. Now that will be coming into the tower there, I think. And then um, let's have a kind of a gothic archway there. Some steps coming down. Um, let's bring this around a bit there so it'll be a bit higher up above we're going to be curved as we're looking up so the curve will be more curvy as you look upwards and that's perspective in action there so i'm going to have like a oh, big gothic kind of window there and a big gothic window there and these are going to be this is going to be a ruined kind of gothic window um and then we're going to want a kind of a turret kind of effect on the top like that. So that will be coming around. And then I think we'll have a very simple kind of little window up above. This will be the end of the build. Yeah, let's start working on that. So I'm going to come around the top there like that and down. Let's just do this castellated top section first. Um, and you're going to see there and a little bit there. So you've got these kind of bits of depth there. Now this is going to come curving around there like that. Let's have a little band. And then I think what I'm going to do is put these little uh, support kind of bits going up. I'm sure there's a technical term for them, but I don't know what they are. So these will be like little triangles going up. And then the inside will be inside as it were <laughs> underneath there and then what we want is a kind of a crumbly line coming down the side to give it an old crumbly feeling um, and then this will be the lintel over the window now we don't want to draw all the bricks and stones because you're just going to spend all day long and the whole thing is going to give you migraine from you know all these <laughs> drawing all these lines and just looking at it is going to give you migraine probably let's worry about that a bit later now let's do this kind of gothic doorway that's going to come there i suppose i could have done that with a more crinkly line really and we need a keystone in the arch which is going to be like that and then we need the whatever they're called those bits and then this is going to be so you want a small one and then a bigger one that's most just like kind of bricks really small one bigger one small bigger small bigger like that and then maybe there's a bit of fancy something down there we're gonna have um, a door frame be there and then let's have the door well half the door still kind of there Oh, I went a bit wiggly there. So this will be uh, the door, the old door. You're going to want a little knocker on thing on there as well, aren't you? Which then means that this part here is going to be very dark in there. Now let's start on this ruined sort of section here. This is going to want to be very crumbly as it sort of attaches onto the tower. And then here, I'm going to now just do some random kind of blocks of stone. And then we want a kind of a biggish one there. And so, because, you know, it is built up of stone. So this top here is going to be um, kind of made of random blocks of stone, basically, um, which aren't always all the same size. So just kind of fill those in like that. That's given us the top there. That kind of works, I think. Now we can carry on with this these Gothic windows. So they're going to be arched. And again, we want to have um, a keystone at the top of an arch. 
I'm not an architect, so I don't know the name for all these things. We're going to put these, these blocks in to make the arch. Now, my long-time subscriber, <laughs> who is always commenting, and, and I know does a lot of my drawings, uh, Raggy Ragsdale, who will also go click here to his channel and uh, he will teach you to play guitar and do all sorts of stuff like that. Uh, and he was asking about drawing stones. And he said he'd been doing a project where he'd just been drawing endless stones. Um, and you don't want to be doing that, do you really? So let's put a little angle out like that. So this is going to be kind of like the window sill, And that will be coming up in kind of at an angle in there like that so that you can bring up the inside and then you're going to want this kind of tracery on the inside there like that so yeah if you're doing a kind of a ruined building castles things like that you don't want to draw every single brick and this is where Hergé with his Tintin books got it so beautifully uh, it's a style called Lean Clear or Clear Line and you, you just do what's necessary without any shading. So so I see I put shading in there so that immediately it's not Lean Clear. Lean Clear is, is French and it comes from the whole, whole Bande Désinée kind of thing which are the, you know the comic books. Bande Désinée is, is, is a designed band so it's a strip cartoon basically. Bond, it will be strip band. It's Hergé who did Tintin is just the master at it. But you look at his illustrations and think, wow, how does he do that? Well, he, he uses a lot of, well, he used, he's not around anymore, sadly. Um, he used a lot of photographic um, reference and he had a lot of people working for him. He didn't do it entirely on his own. Um, so all the backgrounds and buildings and things, he would actually be employing other illustrators doing the backgrounds and stuff. And they worked as a team, you know, and they're deciding which is the best angles and things. And they put a lot of work and effort into making Tintin look as gorgeous as it is. Like I always say, <laughs> make sure that your ink is dry before you erase those pencil lines. So Raggy, here we are. How do you draw all the stonework? Well, you don't draw all the stonework. You just draw bits of it. And you're going to use some bits of it here to give an indication of the curve of the, the whole thing going on here. So you want to get get a curving shape on those and we can maybe put some actually let's put some a little bit of something going on there like that and then here we still want to be working with the curve but the curve will as it comes down this is kind of eye level this will be pretty square on so you want to do kind of a big long one and a small one so like you would if you were building a wall you're going to have one crossing the gaps of the two underneath does that make sense so here again something like that yeah so so you know you kind of want to kind of key in here on the edges so the edges are quite important we'll do a few more kind of threes are quite good you could maybe do you know all these stones are not the same size so you could have small ones you could have a you know a big one there putting the big ones in at the bottom as kind of you know keystones we could maybe have like that and then smaller ones and then maybe kind of a biggish one and a couple of small ones so you're not drawing every single stone <laughs> that is the secret i think and then to make it look more of a ruin let's uh let's put a kind of a buddlier growing at the top which which is quite often happens um you get you know, sort of plants growing. Buddleia is a great one for growing out of stonework. And that has these great sort of looping um, blooms like that. And then we want some leaves in there as well. And maybe some sort of wallflowers. You know, they're called wallflowers for a reason. Because <laughs> they grow in walls. They're quite happy growing in walls. Now, with the this is a kind of be a kind of a rocky outcrop here. So here, I'm going to put some shading in to give this a kind of a, a 
a rocky feel. So I'm assuming that the light is coming in at a certain angle. Now I can't tell you exactly what I'm doing here because a lot of this is just sort of instinct from having done an awful lot of it, I suppose. I don't know. So I'm making that a bit darker there as well. I don't know. That was purely instinctive. I think I'm making it darker just to sort of bring the steps forward. And we can do that. And maybe a few more sort of bits of growth. And Hergé has <laughs> these, these birds all around it. I think they, they always give a, a great feeling of sort of loneliness. And um, so we can have a few kind of crows or something flying around. Uh, I'm going to do this in a very, very simple kind of and in fact, I'm going to come all the way down the side here. Maybe I'll leave some of these stones untinted. Um, so now I'm making this a bit lighter as it comes around to give us sort of a feeling of curve. And then I'm going to bring that extra bit in there. And maybe I'll leave some of these stones unshaded. And I'll shade in all this rockiness down below too. I think inside the window and inside the door, I think we can have that quite dark. Also, we want internally quite dark in the window frames. Probably have a little bit of shadow underneath there. And also the door. We could have a little bit of shadow up there and maybe underneath here too. Underneath there. And another thing you could do is, is just to sort of paint your bricks in. So we can add some more bricks at a different kind of level like that. A different tonal level, should I say. And I'm feeling actually that what we could do is add a bit of shadow here. So imagine the sun is coming down here. It's kind of casting a shadow, which is kind of curve around the building, isn't it? Like that. And we'll maybe be a bit darker down below. So I'm going to work that. <laughs> the darkness up there. You might like to give a little bit of kind of shadow to each brick as well, or stone, just to give a bit of modelling to it. And then you can also, in a very kind of Tintin kind of style, put a bit of shading in there too, like that. And then I think, you know, we, we need to create a, a silhouette, so I'm going to paint these in here a bit darker to sort of give a, a, a silhouette to the top of the wall. Like that. And then we'll just just fade that those brush strokes out into these little kind of painterly <laughs> kind of things. Uh, maybe have little stones in there, but I think I want a little bit more shade around on this side. So I'm going to just paint this side a little darker, and also up at the top there to get that silhouette. So maybe put a few more just little things around. Like that. I feel I'm getting there. I feel I'm getting there. I want that just a little darker again. <laughs> it's constantly adding, isn't it? And then uh, a little darker. I'm going to have kind of a shadow there and make that door a bit darker again. And I think it's knowing when to stop. That's what I always say. So I think I'm going to do this last little bit here. Add a bit of texture maybe. So maybe it's walls on the other side. And I think actually we can maybe put a little bit of shadow underneath these stones. This is also going to help us create the edge silhouette as well. Maybe that needs a bit, that needs a little bit of shade to it. Maybe this side of the, the inside, it's like the window frame I suppose, needs a little bit of shadow as well. There you go, how <laughs> to draw a ruined Thing. Thanks for watching and you can support this channel and get so much more on my Patreon page. Click to find out more. Make sure you are subscribed to the Shoe Rain and Drawing channel on YouTube and in the meantime, keep drawing, 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 practice, practice, practice and I'll see you next time. You take care now. Bye bye.